Welcome to Massive Late Fee. And now your hosts, Mark and Carol. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Massive Late Fee. You know it, you love it. My name is Mark. <laughs> With me as always is my wife, Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? Not much. It's been a good week here. It is October 13th, 1999. It is? Yeah. It's October 13th. It's August 13th. Did I say October? Holy crap. I was so, like, confused. <laughs> Carol thought she'd been abducted by aliens. <laughs> like, You've lost time. The leaves on the trees are green. I the the weird. <laughs> no, it's August 13th, 1999. Okay. okay. You did look alarmed. You're like, it is? <laughs> But uh, anyway, uh, we've got a lot to talk to you about, but not really. Just a movie and a couple stories. Uh, I, I, I didn't. There weren't there weren't that many stories that I could find, Carol, no. of interest. But uh, I thought this one was sort of interesting. This is not an entertainment story, but interesting nonetheless. Uh, Far calls gadget ingenious. Uh, so Detroit area car dealer Mel Far. Are you familiar with Mel Far, the superstar dealer? No, are no, you? No, uh, superstar, yeah. Okay. He's a former Detroit Lion. Okay, that explains it. He uh, he's owned a car dealership in the Detroit area for many years. Uh, anyway, so he's come up with a revolutionary electronic gadget to make high-risk customers pay their car notes on time. But two Detroit area women took a more con- uh, conventional approach on Thursday. They filed a lawsuit to try to make Far remove the so-called on-time device from their cars. The women, who haven't missed a payment, said the device shut off their vehicles oh, no. in freeway traffic recently <gasps> and posed as a safety threat. Oh, my God. Both managed to restart their vehicles. They won't take it off, and they refuse to shut it off, even though they haven't worked the kinks out of the system. Mandy Bergeron, 21, of Wixom, said this week, and when you call them about the problem, they treat you like you're stupid. Bergeron, a supervisor at Lo- a, a Livonia uh, contact lens company, said the device has caused her to miss two days of work because oh, no. she couldn't start her car. The other woman, Shavella Jones, 21 of Detroit, said the device has caused her to be late for job interviews. Far says they're wrong. Quote, if their car stopped in traffic, they stopped because of something else, Far said Thursday, insisting that the devices are safe and reliable he said the gadgets operate on the same principle as car alarms. They only prevent delinquent customers from starting their cars. They won't shut them off. Hmm. So, but, like, when? When does that happen only in their driveway? Because yeah. if it happens when you're, I don't know, 50 miles from home, that's a problem. Yeah, what if you're idling? I, it seems, I, like, if you're worried enough about that someone's not going to pay their lease or whatever... That you have to install a baby like monitor on their car so you can shut off their car or whatever, then maybe just don't lease them a car if you're yeah. that, if you're that worried. For real, like that's no good. I mean, I get where they're coming from, but fuck that. And they both say that they stopped. They were stopped on the freeway. Yeah, that's I don't know. I mean, you know, Mel Far, great running back. I've never bought a car from him, <laughs> uh, but I I don't know. I don't know. That sounds. Sounds messed up to me. It's very dangerous. Yeah, not good. Not good stuff. Uh, but what is good stuff, Carol? Is what? Heather Locklear. Yes. Oh, you agree? <laughs> she is hot. Yeah. Uh, she's going to be on uh, the. She's going to join the sitcom Spin City, apparently. Uh, but Heather Locklear, you mean the curvy, mini-skirted soap opera vixen? who generated wonderful, lurid, melodramatic moments as Sammy Joe on Dynasty in the 1980s, and more recently as Amanda on Melrose Place. But can she be funny? Intentionally, that is? Uh, yeah, mm, so. We'll have to see. Will anybody be listening to her jokes? That's the question. <laughs> she She's very attractive. I don't, like, I... I don't see why she couldn't be funny. I know you didn't watch Dynasty no. when it was on. Absolutely not. With uh, Joan Collins but and uh, John Forsyth, of course. 
the Carringtons. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, the only soap opera I watched was All My Children. Yeah. You, didn't you watch Days of Our Lives a little bit? No? No. No, oh, okay. Victor Kariakis. Nope. The Kariakis clan. Palmer something. And then what? Palmer from All My Children. I didn't watch All My Children. Erica Kane. Why well, I didn't watch whatever you're talking Erica about. Erica Kane. Is that Susan Lucci? Yeah. Okay, the one that's that's always ne- not winning the Emmy. Susan Lucci. Yeah, yeah, it is. Good for her. Well, I mean, not good <laughs> not for her. Not good for her. Give her an Emmy. Um, Maybe they already did it. I don't remember. But anyway, what about Lilith Fair, Carol? I wish that we were going. I wish I was a little bit taller. Um, Summer's Gentlest Festival takes a final bow because you remember they're getting rid of it. Uh, Lilith Fair 99, 3 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, Pine Knob Music Theater. $34 for tickets, honey. Not bad. No, not at all. On the main stage, we have Liz Fair. Then we have Martina McBride, Queen Latifah, the Dixie Chicks, Cheryl Crow, and Sarah McLachlan. I like every single one of those performers. Second stage is Jara Jane, Badi Assad. Innocence Mission, Sinead Lohan, TBA, so we don't know, uh, Jennifer Knapp, and then on Sunday, we've got Wild Strawberries, Carl, Car- Carrie Newhouse, Nelly Furtato, Morley Sozy, and Susan Tendechi. So you really, really do not want to be on, like, the second stage. You only want to be on the main stage because nobody is going to watch anything other than the main stage when they have such an amazing lineup. Yeah, exactly. I've never heard of Wild Strawberries or Nelly Furtato. No. So, interesting. (laughs) The last thing I want is for Lilith Fair to dwindle in people's minds. I want people to remember it in a magical way. For McLaughlin, there's also a certain relief since diving into the Lilith organizing waters in 1996 when Pine Knob served as a test date for the unnamed all-female concept, McLaughlin has worn herself out. It's a fantastic experience, but it's also very tiring, she says. It's a huge amount of work. We want it to be fresh and exciting for us, too. I could see threads of unrest. You could see if we did it another year, we'd all come unraveled. So, Interesting. But uh, good stuff. Cheryl Crow's playing both nights. Nice. Just, just to rub it in my face a little more, that I won't be there. <laughs> we could go. I could still maybe maybe I maybe maybe. I, maybe I secretly got you tickets. Maybe you did. We'll see. You don't huh? even know. Hmm. What about the insane clown posse? No. ICP. I don't like them. With biohazard, mindless self indulgence, crazy bone, and inspect the deck. At Cobo Arena. No, thank you. Some of the biggest insane Klausy... (laughs) Insane what now? Klausy. Some (laughs) of the biggest insane clown posse fans aren't in Metro Detroit where the rappers grew up. They're on the internet. The duo, which performs at Cobo Arena, uses the internet to keep in touch with its fans, often dropping in on chat rooms and responding to questions the pair declined to answer from the media... Or just talk a little to ICP fans. The internet presence has helped spawn the Juggalos, extreme fans who paint their faces and mimic the group, cruise the internet to chat about them and collect the group's paraphernalia. In their music, the duo defines Juggalos as people who don't care about anything. Oh my. But their fans care about them. David Black, a 15-year-old Philadelphia fan of the Clowns, helped create the popular ICP website, www.com. Psychopath, psychopathichq.com. Interesting. He devotes most of his spare time to working on the site. Black says he became an ICP fan in 1996 after one of its videos, uh, the draw was its uniqueness. So in he's 15. So in 1996, he was, what, 12? Yeah. Oh, good for That's you. That's crazy. Good for you, loving, insane clown posse. I'll tell you what, though. You know what's insane, Carol? What? The movie we watched this week. Yeah. Broke Down Palace. I assume named after the Grateful Dead song. I don't know the Grateful Dead song. 
Uh, it's about uh, women that get imprisoned it in Thailand. It is not, I am sure. <laughs> there was a good song they played a little too much in this movie, though. Yeah, what song? Oh, God, I don't know the name. It's like... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know the song either, but... They played it, like, a play, lot. Yeah. It was, like, in the beginning. It sounds vague. It was, Asian. like, underneath some things. And mm-hmm. then it was playing, like, through a radio in a scene. Like, come on, guys. You're diegetic as well. Nice. Are they being cheap and not getting, like, enough rights for music? Like, I don't know. But, yeah. Uh, what did you think of Broke Down Palace, Carol? I really liked it. Yeah? We're going to break down, break down, broke down palace. What did you think? You really liked it. I fucking hated it. Did you? You fucking hated it? Wow. It's depressing. Yeah, but it was depressing and awful. And like so the movie ends. Well, I'm not gonna spoil the ending yet. Yeah, I mean like we haven't even talked about what the movie's about yet. But when the movie ends, I was like, Why? Why the fuck would they end the movie like this? And then it hit me. I was like, This is based on a true story. Obviously. It's gotta be. So I went and looked it up. Nope, it's not. Oh. Not based on a true story. Okay. So they chose to end it this way. They could have ended it any way they wanted to, (laughs) and they chose to end it this way. Well, I mean, not every movie needs to have, like, a happy ending. I guess, but does every movie need to be misery? (laughs) Misery loves company. And, And, like, they didn't... There are so many things that they could have and should have done that a normal screenplay would do. Like what? That they didn't do. Like what? There's a villain in the prison. This yeah. asshole woman. And she never gets come up in at all. <laughs> That's true. Nothing ever happens to her. That is true. Why make that character if you're not going to give them their come up It feels unsatisfying. Because it's all awful. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so go ahead. Explain. The movie. Okay. So these two high school friends, well, these two friends apparently have been friends since they were babies. Darlene, played by Kate Beckinsale, and Claire Danes plays Sarah, Amanda? No. Lara? I don't know. Claire Danes. Uh, <laughs> Claire Danes as herself. Right. The girl um, from the wrong side of the track. So it's like there's the one who. The, Kate Beckinsale's character is, like, the good one, and yeah. then Claire Danes' character is the bad one. Yeah. But, like, they're kids, so I think that's kind of shitty. And Claire Danes is like, you know, we always knew what we were. Whatever. Yeah. Like, Life I don't... <laughs> you think so, huh? You think uh, Claire Danes is in love with her? I do. I still do. Okay. I so, think she's <clears throat> bisexual, though. Well, okay. Because well, I think she has sex with guys, too. Okay, that's true. There was definitely sex with guys that did occur. Maybe. Well, with at least one of them. Maybe. You don't think either one of them? <sighs> Let me finish saying what happened. I don't so, think, I think Claire Danes didn't. When they were graduating from high school, the quote unquote good one was going away to college and they yeah. decided to go on a trip together first. So instead of going to Hawaii, which is what they told their parents. Because that's the kind of trip their parents would take. They went to Thailand. Thailand. Hawaii would have been so much better. I mean, even without the prison, okay? Even with <laughs> it would have been so much better. But they go they they stay at a hotel that has cockroaches mm-hmm. for six dollars a night. The yeah, water the cockroaches cost six dollars a night. <laughs> the water by where they are is like has human waste in it. And they use it for bathing and drinking. Yeah, the uh, I can't remember the name of the river in Thailand. It's like the the Cho Penang or something like that. It's I can't pronounce it. So they don't even have any. Sorry, our Taiwanese listeners. <laughs> so they don't even have anywhere to swim because no. they're in a shithole hotel, and the only water around them is poison. Yeah. Well, there is a beach uh, that they mention. I assume. The beach is near the Indian Ocean, then. Okay. That's my guess. Yeah, that was what they were supposed to go to. Mm-hmm. Instead, uh, they pretend to be in this fancy hotel. They pretend to be guests yeah, there. Yeah, because they, they, pla- they want some place to swim. Yeah. And they they went wrong in so many ways here. Like, first of all, they asked if they wanted a drink. And they're like, oh, yeah, we'll have a couple of, of whatever she's having. Just say no thanks. Mm-hmm. That would have avoided the whole problem. Or pay cash. Yeah. Like Kate Beckinsale wanted to do. 
But no, no. Uh, Claire Danes' character was like, oh, charge it to room 414. So they get caught after hanging out for what appears to be a long time. They each had mm-hmm. had two drinks. Yeah. What the fuck, ladies? Like, you stand too long. Yeah. So they also should have just moved it along. Mm-hmm. But they don't. They get caught. And this dude walks up and he's like, oh, I keep telling you it's room three, whatever. And 333. Signs for, for their stuff. So they're like, oh, oh, thank you, thank you, kind sir. Mm-hmm. And then they find out he fucking stole the hotel room key that some dude left in the bathroom, and he's, like, a scammer, too. So trust him. Yeah, exactly. So they decide they're going to... And he's Australian. Yeah. Don't trust Australians. Right? So you they... know they're all criminals down there, right? Well, I mean, it is colonized. No offense. No offense, criminals. Australia. So. No offense, our Aussie friends. <laughs> I mean, Aussies are... I'm sure wonderful people now. Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. The fuck? I know. We have, uh, <laughs> we have Bonza content for you here. What the fuck it's does not, that mean? It's not Drongo. He's lost me. I don't All know about right. you. Maybe we'll do a video on Alex. I can Dak, uh, Carol. What? What is happening? I can Dak my Sheila. Uh, I'm using Australian slang, everyone. Cool. Yep, look up all those words. Anyway, go ahead. They decide to spend the day with this guy. They go on, like, I don't know, some kind of boat ride thing, and they go, (laughs) they get drinks, and they go dancing. Mm -hmm. And at first, I thought he was into Claire Danes' character because... He did kind of seem like it. Like, she drags him off and they're dancing and, like, she's hanging all over him. And then he goes up and starts making out with Kate Beckinsale's character. Right. What the fuck, sir? I thought he was going to try to get both of them. Yeah. So I that would have made more sense. Until I knew what he was. Yeah. I mean, truly, though, like, I bet he could have if he'd played it right. I bet he could have gotten them both in bed at the same time. Yeah. Don't you think? Yes. Yeah. He screwed that up. <laughs> yeah, for his drug empire. <laughs> So he, he obviously had ulterior motives, Carol. Well, either way, he was getting his dick wet, okay? He may as well have done it properly. Yeah, but what I'm saying is I don't think the smuggling operation would have gone the way he wanted it to if he had done that. Because you think if they'd been together, he wouldn't have been able to convince them? Mm. Well, and I don't know. There's there's a mystery element to this that there I think is kind of stupid. What? I think it's great, but go uh, ahead. Okay. No, I'm just saying, like, the mystery element couldn't exist if they were in the room together. That is true. So They had to both be with him separately at different times in order for it to, to work, the mystery to work the way they want it to in the, in the script. So Kate Beckinsale goes back to his hotel with him. Mm-hmm. Claire Danes is obviously upset. Yep. And she comes home, or back to their hotel room. And it's like, oh, I've been up all night. It was so wonderful mm-hmm. and so intense, and yep. I need my rest now. And it's like, dude, don't shove in her face like that. Oh, shit. You just got it shoved in your face. Don't <laughs> shove in her. <laughs> and Claire Danes goes out and runs into him in the marketplace. And we think, yeah, like we get the impression that that's all that happens. They chat a little, and she comes back with a bracelet for her friend. It did seem kind of weird that she was coming back late at night ish. Yeah, but so we lost the whole day. Well, yeah, we, they didn't show us the day. Yeah, so it's not like when you thought you lost two months earlier. It's <laughs> it's it's called time lapse that happens in movies, right? But like we don't know what she did with her day, and it didn't really occur to me to wonder. Mm-hmm. But uh, turns out we find out later that uh, she also went back to his hotel. Yeah, but but she says she didn't sleep with him. They just kissed. Yeah, and then she put a stop to it. Which Whatever. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We, she, that's that's one of those mysteries. Can we can we believe her? She did have paint on her hands, and uh, the paint was all over the couch, and she was like, oh, it wasn't me or whatever. <laughs> and she was a child, so. Oh, my God. Let's use that to indict her and in everything else that's ever happened. Yeah. Very fair. That was uh, Kate Beckinsale's dad. He blames her for everything. Um, but, yeah, so then they, he talks them into going to Hong Kong. 
Which Claire Danes doesn't want to. Right, but she's going so Kate Beckinsale can be with him. She's like, well, I'll just go by myself then or whatever. And it's like, no, that's... All of this is a bad idea. Yeah. Like, if they'd If only... they had listened to Claire Danes, this wouldn't have happened. Right? So, they go... Uh, get in line to get on the plane to Hong Kong, but the police come Mm -hmm. and stop them and search them. And they have both have cocaine or no heroin on them in their bags. Or no, there's only one bag. There's one bag bag with one thing of heroin. Two, two bags of heroin. Okay. But later in court, they say it's six. Well, yeah, they lied. Why would that? What's the point? So this is one of the problems I have with the movie. Okay. I feel like they're, so there is kind of an issue, uh, I've read a little bit about it, of Americans being locked in Thai jails mm-hmm. for drug offenses for long periods of time. It's not like there's millions of them or whatever, but there's pe- there's people, there's American citizens locked away, for you know, separated from their friends and family for 50 years. That's awful. Or more sentences because they smoke some pot or something like that in Thailand. And do not do drugs in Thailand, people. No, I, I wouldn't even go to Thailand, truthfully. Yeah. But that's that's I think part of what this movie wants to highlight is the corruption in the system that they Thailand has extremely harsh anti drug laws, but a very large drug smuggling operation mm-hmm. and problem that goes all over the world. So it's there's a hypocrisy there and there's obviously a ton of corruption there. Right. And we tre- tread on that on a very surface level. Sure. But we never dive deeply into that corruption. And I feel like there's a version of this script where we really like we really dig deep into what the fuck is wrong with Thailand mm-hmm. and what and what's going on with with them. Maybe. But we don't get that. We instead we get a very surface level story that's carried. The movie's carried by Kate Beckinsale and Claire Danes, mm-hmm. who are good actresses and work well off of each other. And that is literally the only thing that carries this movie along. Even Bill Pullman in this movie just comes across as like he's worse than his character in The Lost Highway. He like, and I like Bill Pullman generally as an actor. I mean, you know. Uh, it looks like he's leaning, but um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I like him as a character, but like he just, he goes through these scenes where he's just like, oh, we're never going to get you out of here. Fuck you. I got what I want already. Maybe we should try to get him out of there. <laughs> it's like, what, it, what is this performance? It's so like, yeah, there's one scene he has where they're supposed to get pardoned and they don't get pardoned. And he gets mad at the one guy. And yeah. that's the only scene where he really does any kind of acting. Other than that, it's just like, I'm just going to say my words. I mean, let me walk myself through these lines. That's <laughs> what it feels like. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I get the feeling that he's trying to not be emotionally invested because he feels like it's a losing battle. I guess, yeah. I mean, like, so as a completely jaded ineffected uh, like unaffected person i suppose but like that's also not an interesting character no i agree his character wasn't interesting at all his his wife's character showed a lot more emotion and did a lot more and i think she does better acting yeah throughout the, that's what i'm saying like it just i don't know the performance just it feels very just like phoned in flat it does yeah to me I, i'll agree with you on that but the girls have great chemistry. They're interesting. Yeah. And everything they go through is interesting. Claire Danes is especially good. She's given a lot to work with mm-hmm. with her character because she has a very specific choice to make as an actress of whether or not because she's one of the only people cuz they the spoilers they don't tell us. So one of the the big mysteries in this is did he convince one of them to carry these drugs? Like you would, you think he must have convinced one of them mm-hmm. to carry the drugs with with them, and like, did Claire Danes do it and not tell Kate Beckinsale? 
Did Kate Beckinsale do it and not tell Claire Danes? A couple times, Kate Beckinsale's like, I know you didn't do it, which sort of indicates that maybe Kate Beckinsale did. I never got the impression that Kate Beckinsale did it. I never got the impression that Claire Danes did it either, though. Um, I think she's... So, the, as as the script is written, I think it's open to interpretation. I don't think Claire Danes thinks her character did it. Okay. Because I don't think she's playing it like her character did it. I also don't know why one of them had to do it. Like, the little ornate shit that it was in, mm-hmm. the whatever little, like, tchotchke, it, he easily could have packed that, put that in there when uh, he was alone with Kate Beckinsale and never told her. And just been like, here, take this, you know. I mean, I I guess. I, I also thought it was possible that the guys who were putting their bags in the taxi could have done it. Yeah, that's true. Because um, the one guy does say, I have your bags. Maybe mm-hmm. he gave him money so the Kate put this in there. Guy might not even have known it was drugs. He might have just been like, he might, he might have just given him a tip and been like, hey, sneak this into their bag. It's a surprise for them. Right. Maybe. But I think... The, the guys do, and that didn't, never occurred to me, the guys do kind of give each give give each other a look when they get them into the taxi. I, I never thought about that, but that does make some sort of sense. But it's crazy the lengths the court goes to to discredit them. They actually get the kid like pool guy yeah the young waiter yeah (laughs) to come and testify that they were you know using somebody else's account and in a thai courtroom that's enough to discredit you and make you you know worthless and apparently just throw them away because it's all about your honor or whatever even though they have no honor the movie really makes me hate thailand (laughs) and i guess that's the point but it's like i feel like that's unfair to the Thai people too, probably. Yeah, but I do that. Like, I mean, it's it's not wrong that the justice system in Thailand is highly corrupt, and that's not good. No, it's not good, and I feel terrible to hear that there are American citizens going through this. Mm-hmm. But at the very end of the movie, they're supposed to be able to get a pardon, and they don't, and. Claire Danes' character throws herself in front of this guy. Who is this guy? Is he like the, the king? king? It's the king. Okay. And begs that, you know, he'll he pardon her friend. Yeah. She says, I did it. She had nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. She never knew anything about it. I'll serve both our sentences. Just let her go. So. He's like, so he. <laughs> it's like they said to this actor, you have the thesis statement of the fucking movie or whatever. And he's like, okay. Because he's, <laughs> he's like. So, if you're lying to save your friend, then you have shown a noble enough character that you shouldn't be in jail, so you deserve a pardon. But if you're telling the truth, then that means your friend is completely innocent, so she should get a pardon, and you should go to jail. And it's like, it basically gives her the choice. Like, choose you or your friend. Yeah. And so she's like, yeah, you know, I fucking did it or whatever. And then then they send her to, he's like, if you're willing to serve both your sentences, which is, uh, let's see, they got, they got 33 years, 33 years plus 15 for trying to escape. So 48, 96, 96 years. Yeah. So life basically. So that's what she's going to serve. Except, you know, her friend and the lawyer are both going to continue to try to get her out. Well, that's what they say at the end. That's the, that's the like, hopeful note that they leave on. I know they'll never stop trying until they get me out or whatever. And it's like, okay. Show me that then. <laughs> like, I, I mean, like, end your movie like that. Don't end your movie with her surrounded by a sea of Thai faces and, and like, uh, you know, uh, you're still in jail. Like, yeah, it's crazy though. Like uh, their friends came, first of all, the Kate Beckinsale's dad comes all the way from America to Thailand just to see them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, that's a really good dad. Right. And he's trying, he's talking to the embassy. Like he's trying to help. 
They're friends from school, Kane. Yeah, Paul Walker comes. That's so nuts. Paul like, Walker takes some time out of Varsity Blues to come and be in this movie <laughs> for five seconds. I mean, like, I can't, I, I can't imagine going halfway across the world to visit a friend in jail for like five yeah, minutes, where you knew that the friend got put in jail. So it's like you're like, I could fuck put in jail too, right? And they, they end up smuggling them money in. In a bra. And it's like, how do you know that's not going to get you thrown in jail? Right? I know. Ballsy shit. Yeah. And then at one point, Claire Danes is smoking a joint in jail. Mm-hmm. If they are so tough on drugs, how is there a joint in there? What did she do to get it? What does she even have to trade? But that's the thing is, like, they're they're supposed to be tough on drugs, but they're really not tough on drugs. Mm. They're tough on drugs sporadically they're tough on smuggling of drugs yeah but only sporadically too because it comes out like this dude nicholas parks or whatever the fuck his name was whose real name is skip yeah con or yeah. something like that some stupid ass name that they made up skip was definitely part of it yeah i've never met an australian named skip by the right. way right but anyway so it, apparently everyone knows about him the head of the police know about him the Lou Diamond Phillips, who I guess is like the American consulate to Thailand or whatever, uh, he knows about him. Like, they all know him. He has friends in really high places and all that stuff because he's paying them bribes mm-hmm. to let him do what he's doing. So they know that this is all bullshit, but they're letting these women get thrown in jail for life anyway. I think it's kind of nuts, though, if it's like everybody knows and everybody looks the other way. Why did he need to distract them with these girls in the first place? That, that was the whole thing. I, I think that's I think that's part of the, the tribute that they were talking about. Like, he needs to throw them a bone by like, okay, here's some here's some people you can arrest, make a show of it, you know, kind of thing. I think that's what it, I think that's part of it. That's I think, awful. I think he bribes them, but also he bribes them with that, too. But like these poor, sweet girls and he was like sexual at least with both of them he didn't have sex with both of them yeah and then just be like okay go to jail like yeah. what a monster yeah exactly yeah you're right and and kate beckinsale really thought he cared about her mm-hmm. that's why she was going to hong kong although maybe she was going to hong kong to smuggle the drugs you never know yeah maybe like she i like you said i don't really get the impression that she did that on purpose but like the lawyer thinks so because the lawyer's like the little, he goes and meets uh, this woman that in Hong Kong that was part of the sl- smuggling operation too. One of the ones that successfully smuggled her, her drugs in. But after she saw those two get caught, was like, mm, I ain't fucking getting that bag, and she doesn't get the bag. Yeah. Um. So she like she tells him what this guy does and how he operates, and so Bill Pullman goes in there and and is like. Kate Beckinsale, I know that shit wouldn't have worked on Claire Danes, that lovey-dovey shit. So he had to have done it with you. And she's like, he never asked me to smuggle drugs. He talked about Paris. He talked about blah, 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 and all this stuff and everything. But he never, like, he never told me about drugs. <laughs> and then she's like, well, he couldn't have done it with Claire Danes' his character because they were never alone together. And then Bill Pullman gives the whole game away where he's like, uh. You're right. And then he walks away. <laughs> it's like, okay, obviously. Yeah. Oh, goodness. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, so do you, th- you think that he convinced Claire Danes to do it? I think of the two of them, she would be more likely to be convinced, not with the lovey-dovey shit, but maybe like a bribe. She doesn't have a great future to look forward to. She was doing this as an adventure. Like, maybe... She'd be like, okay, sure, whatever. I don't think so, because of the way she takes care of her friend when they're in prison and stuff. I don't think she'd put her in that danger. I don't think she I don't think she did it. Ba- like, every time it, com- it comes up, like when she says, I didn't do it to the dad. Mm-hmm. She, like, the anger, like I said, as written, I don't, I don't know. But Claire Danes doesn't think her character did it. Yeah. Because that reaction is the reaction, that anger reaction is the reaction of someone that did not do the thing they're being accused of. And when she talks to her dad and she, like she breaks down crying, but do you think I did it and everything? And he's like, oh, it'd be understandable. Like he, he never says, no, I don't think you did it. And she like 
fucking loses it and everything. That's not the reaction of someone that actually is guilty. Yeah. So, I like I said, as written, I don't know, but Claire Danes doesn't. Claire Danes does not portray it like she thinks her person did it at all. She, it's not even ambiguous to me. Do you think she thinks Kate Beckinsale did it? I don't. Uh, not, probably not. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know why either one of them would had to have agreed to it. They easily could have had stuff, something slipped in there. If neither of them did it, then the other one must be thinking the whole time. You know what I mean? That like, if Claire Danes didn't do it, then she must be thinking Kate Beckinsale did. If Kate Beckinsale did, she must be thinking Claire Dane did it. I guess, but they're both still like friends, and it doesn't present it. The that's the other thing I don't. The mystery is not is not fleshed out enough because they no one ever says like, hey, there's no way this could have gotten in here unless like one of you put it in here because it's like. Kate Beckinsale's like, I packed the bag. Claire Danes was like, I had the bag. Mm-hmm. So, like, they're they're both guilty in, in one way because of that. I'm pretty sure I'd have to watch the movie again, but I'm pretty sure, which I'm never going to do. But I'm pretty <laughs> sure that, I'm pretty sure that the thing, the little, like, holder or whatever, the ornamental case mm-hmm. that they found the heroin in is something that Claire Danes bought with that dude mm. when they were shopping. I think he bought it for her. Okay. So, yeah, I like that. That lends it more towards it might have been Claire Danes, but like they never, they're never definitively like, "Hey, one of you had to have done this." Yeah. If they, if the, if the script took a hard line of, there is no way that he could have gotten this stuff in your bag. One of you had to put it in the bag. Then I, I think that could be more intriguing. But they don't. No, no one ever says that. And when you brought up the stuff about the the attendance and everything at the hotel, that I mean, that makes me think that you know more that one of them did it. Yeah. And the other eight girls or so, the other six girls, yeah, all think he's their boyfriend, and they're all doing it for him. Can I ask you a question? Uh-huh. Did you think this guy was super attractive? No. Attractive enough to get. Eight women? Like, sleep with eight different women and have eight different women smuggle drugs for him? I mean, he's charming. I don't think he's a supermodel. But, but you, you think... I that, think charm matters more than looks, and you, I think he's charming. You think that, that he reasonably could have done this? Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. Would you have smuggled drugs Fuck for him? Fuck no. I'm not an idiot. Jeez. Of course not. Oh, my goodness. They... The... There's almost archetypes or stereotypes but not quite that bad character wise claire danes and kate beckinsale and it's really like their their characters are severely underwritten and it's really the strength of their performance and how good of actresses both of them are that elevate this a lot yeah but you really see like kate beckinsale being the like the wide-eyed innocent like oh yeah i signed the confession like it was just everything i said was in the claire danes was it in thai was it in english like they're trying to get her to sign something she's like i don't speak your fucking language no (laughs) i don't know what that says yeah she's obviously so much smarter yeah and yet the other one's the one going to college right well she's more world worldly yeah oh and the performance when she was on the phone with her father yeah, I know. That's that was heart wrenching. I guess. I mean, I guess thinking about that, like how hurt she was that he thought he she did it. I guess you're right. She didn't do it. I don't think so. I, I don't think she did it. I don't think either of them did it. And that's that's the problem. Is I think that the script wants neither of them to have done it, but they want to set it up like it has to be either one or or. But that's why it's not so clearly delineated. Because they want the real answer to be neither one of them did it. You know, I really enjoyed the movie, but I do feel like maybe you're right, and it would have been a better movie if we'd had some kind of actual closure. Well, yeah, closure. Resolution. Yeah, I think there should have been more closure. The ending, really, I I didn't absolutely hate the movie. Uh, I liked a lot of it, and I was emotionally invested in a lot of it. I hated the way it ended. The ending really turned me off a lot to the movie. Um, but I guess it does. I Like, I can understand it does kind of undercut her sacrifice if, like, 
they're like, she gets like Kate Beckinsale goes to go home over everything, and then the next scene it's like, and you're going, to, you're getting out too. Like, <laughs> but yeah, like I think if I was going to rewrite the script, which it's I can't, it's too late, it's already been released. But um, <laughs> but if I was going to rewrite the script, I would I'd focus on the girls, maybe make their characters have a little, have a little more depth, a little more complexity. Um, but I would also focus heavily on the corruption of the system. And I would use a couple different characters to highlight the corruption of the system. I'd have more, uh, interactions between like, um, Bill Pullman's character and let's say like one of the other lawyers or one of the judges, someone in that represents the legal, the justice system of Thailand. And I would like use those characters to show the, like just the the widespread corruption of the system and how horrible it is and everything. I'd show other Americans in there too, maybe not a ton, but at least a couple of yeah. Americans with similar stories. I've been here for ten years, you know. Like I can't even get like whatever a phone call anymore or whatever. Um, and uh, and I would have a, a better resolution probably. And I mean, if you really want to to go down that road, I would have a clearly defined mystery of like circumstances set up in such a way that the guy couldn't have done it and no one else could have done it. It had to have been one of the two girls knowingly and naively working with him. Yeah. Uh, And then, you know, you can, and you can leave that as a open mystery where you don't actually answer the question and you have to, everyone, you know, kind of take sides who, who, who really did it. You could do that. But I think those things like, the movie needs to be sharper. That's what I think. Like the the writing, like the whole plot and everything needs to sharpen. It's a little too surface, a little too generic. Okay. Well, you talked me into not loving it anymore. I only like it. Would you recommend that people go see it? Yeah. I think you can wait till the video. I don't think you have to avoid it completely, but I think you could wait till video. I think you should go see it, and then I think you should tell us who you think did it. And then I think you should write to your senator <laughs> and President Clinton and say, like, oh, my God, there's two, there's two fine-looking women in the top prison. I got I to gotta rescue them. <laughs> Just tell them that they all look like Claire Danes and Kate Beckinsale. There you go. Oh, we got to get those women back stateside. Do they like cigars? Oh, but that is the uh, episode for the week, Carol. Tell people where they can find their own phallic shapes. (laughs) You can write us at latev1994 at Mm awol.com. Check out the website at www.retrolatev.com and share the tapes with your friends. See you next time. Bye. Bye.